Hey guys, it's Lexi, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about carbocations and carbanions. So first, I want you guys to look at methane. So methane, you can see, is a carbon atom that has four hydrogens attached via single bonds. And so if we look at this carbon, it has a formal charge of zero because it has the four electrons around it that it needs in order to have a formal charge of zero. Remember, carbon wants to form four bonds. However, if you take one of the bonds away from carbon, you're going to get a carbocation. So the definition of a carbocation is a positively charged carbon atom that only has three bonds. So you can see that this carbon is only bonded to three hydrogens. Because carbon would like to have an additional bond, having only three is going to make it electron poor or electron deficient. And that's why it's going to have the positive charge. Remember that if something has only three three bonds and no lone pairs, that's going to make it trigonal planar geometry. So this is going to be 120 degree bond angles. Also, it's going to be sp2 hybridized. Because the carbon atom is missing electrons, it is going to be electrophilic. So this is something that can get attacked by a nucleophile. Another big thing to note about carbocations is that they violate the octet rule. So if you look at this carbocation, it has only two, four, six electrons around it. And remember that for the octet rule, you want to have eight electrons. And so carbocations are always going to violate the octet rule. So remember methane has four bonds. It's a carbon atom that has four hydrogens bonded to it. And typically that's what we're going to want to see for a carbon atom. However, if we look at a carbanion, that's going to have only three bonds, but it's also going to have this additional lone pair. And that means the carbon is going to have more electrons to itself than it really wants to have. That is why it's going to have a negative formal charge. It's going to have too many negative electrons. And if we're looking at the carbanion, we can see that it has three bonds and a lone pair. That is going to give it a trigonal pyramidal geometry. And that means that the bond angle is going to be less than 109.5. So you're going going to be looking at around 107 to 109 degrees. And another thing to note is because you have this extra electron density, the carbanion is going to be able to act as a nucleophile, such as the Grignard reagent, which you'll see later in the course, or also it can act as a base, as a strong base. And another part is the hybridization. So if you look at this carbon, it's going to have one two, three, four electron groups around it, giving it a hybridization of sp3. Now that's not always the case for a carbanion. Let's look at a different example of a carbanion. This one here is also considered a carbanion. It's a negatively charged carbon, which means it has three bonds and a lone pair. However, this lone pair is a single bond away from a double bond. That is known as being a lily. When a lone pair is allylic, it can participate in resonance. So we can move the lone pair to form a double bond and then move the double bond to form a lone pair, as you can see over here on the right. And so because that lone pair can move via resonance, it's said to be delocalized. And we do not count it when we're doing hybridization. So if you look at the carbon, it has one, two, three electron groups around it, not four, because we're not going to count the delocalized lone pair. So that is going to make it sp2 hybridized. Also, we can better appreciate that this carbon atom is therefore trigonal planar geometry with a bond angle of about 120 degrees. Because the carbanion has this lone pair, it's still going to be able to act as a nucleophile or as a base. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and also hit the notification bell so that you can stay up to date when I upload new videos.